Is it just me, or does the evolutionary story keep changing? Hmm. Hi, John. Hey. Woo! Oh, hey. hey, where'd this truck come from? Up in the attic. I was cleaning it out earlier and I found it and it's got a whole bunch of junk in here, but some of it is actually helping me with our science homework. Hey, hey, check this out. Oh, man. Oh, was this your grandpa's old yearbook? Yeah, it must have been. Look how out of date everyone looks. Was this really in style back then? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think our kids are going to look at our yearbooks and say the same things? Nah. So, how'd you say this trunk helped you? Well, I'm starting to get the picture on human evolution. <laughs> this book was published in 1925 by Sir Arthur Keith. And now he was the president of the Royal Anthropological Society of Great Britain. And the skull? It was found in 1912. Now, it called Piltdown Man the find of the 20th century. I think it was the New York Times said that it proves the theory of evolution. There were like 500 articles published when they first found this. Then in 1953, they discovered that the skull was a fake. Are you serious? Oh yeah. They took chemicals and they aged the skull. They made it look like it was really, really old. And then the jaw is actually from an orangutan. And the guy who discovered it, he actually filed the teeth down and made it look real. What the heck were scientists thinking? Have you ever heard of Nebraska Man? Nebraska Man was the first American ape man fossil to be discovered. And Harold Cook found just a tooth big enough for the New York Times, okay? And then it went viral for back then, and the London News did a whole drawing on it from a single tooth. There's still a picture of him on Wikipedia. They drew all that based on a tooth? Yeah, but 10 years later, they discovered out that that tooth was actually from an extinct pig. No way. Yeah, so Piltdown Man was the popular proof for evolution for 40 years, and Nebraska Man was the popular proof for 10. Makes you wonder about what they're teaching us today. I'm way ahead of you. Take a look at my little brother's sixth grade history book. Really? Your brother's book? You have way too much time on your hands. Mm. Yeah. Well, some of these eight men look familiar. <laughs> Long lost relatives of yours? No, I'm just kidding, but no, it's because they're in our book as well. Oh, well in our book, they say Australopithecus afarensis evolved 3.8 to 3 million years ago. But in the sixth grade book, Australopithecus evolving 4 to 5 million years ago. Uh-huh. Now, look at this. This is an old 1951 Life magazine publication. According to this, Australopithecus lived a million to 500,000 years ago. Wow, that's different by a few million years. Mm -hmm. These dates are all over the place. Yeah, well, it gets worse. So this is our biology, the Holt biology book. Okay. And it shows Homo habilis as living 1.6 to 1.9 million years ago. But in the sixth grade one, it's 2.4 million years ago. So which one's true? I guess it depends on which class you're in. So what I'm wondering is if any of these dates are correct. It looks like today's truth is just tomorrow's fiction. If you look back at all the textbooks, they're all published at about the same time. Take a look at my little brother's sixth grade book. Now this book shows all of the popular fossils today. Okay, so here we are, Homo sapiens, right? right? But check out what came before us. Homo erectus. Right, and while he had a human body, evolutionists like to point out that he had a different skull, at least a modern human skull. Now, the journal Science, back in October of 2013, they reported they found skulls in Georgia, like Russia. It shows how different the Homo erectus skulls can look. Wow, they are so different. Homo erectus and human skulls can be very similar. In fact, they did a study on 202 modern day Aborigines, like Australians, on the shape of their skulls. And they found that 14 of the 17 traits were the same on the Aborigines as on the Homo erectus skulls. 
So it looks like Homo erectus wasn't becoming human, but was already human? Exactly. The next ape man back is Homo habilis. Homo means human. So they're trying to make him look more human-like than he really is. So Richard Leakey is a famous evolutionist, and he said, of the several dozen specimens that have been said at one time or another to belong to Homo habilis, at least half of them don't. But there is no consensus as to which 50% should be excluded. No one anthropologist 50% is quite the same as another's. So they can't even really classify which fossils are supposed to go into which category. In fact, some scientists are fighting to have Homo habilis reclassified as Australopithecus. Which one? Australopithecus is Lucy. Oh yeah, I've heard of her. Yeah. Now, Donald Johansson, 1973, discovered just the shin and the leg bone. Now, the way they line up makes scientists think that she could walk upright. Mm-hmm. And there's a picture of her. Wow, there's a lot of her missing. <laughs> hey, at least it's more than a tooth. <laughs> it's true. You want to see the fragments of the skull that they found? Sure. All right, wait for it. Booyah. Wow. That's what they found. Not that much. Man, there's a lot of skulls in here. Was your grandpa a witch doctor? No, he was a yard sailor. Now. Looky what we have here. We have here a modern bonobo monkey skull, and we have Lucy. So the brown pieces are the actual fragments of Lucy's skull that they found. Well, they look so alike. Her brain is only a third the size of a modern human's, about the average chimp brain size, and she only stood about three and a half feet tall. Take a look at the way that Lucy has been portrayed in like, the media, like books and films, online. Wow. Everywhere. They really went out of their way to make her look human-like. Take a look in our other biology book. Oh, wow. Hey, look at the whites of those eyes. You know, I've been to a lot of different zoos and I've seen a lot of different apes and each of them have completely brown eyes and not the eye whites that us humans have. Man. It even looks like she's thinking about something. Yeah, bananas. <laughs> I don't think they found any eyeball fossils, but if you wanted to make an ape man look more human, changing the colors of the eye whites in pictures is a good way to do it. That's true. Here's a picture of what she probably looked like. Man, what a difference. Yeah, well, but they do say they have found several complete skeletons of the Australopithecus, though not specifically Lucy. They found around 360, 362 actual specimens from the species Australopithecus, specifically Lucy. However, Charles Oxner said, the Australopithecines known over the last several decades are now irrevocably removed from a place in the evolution of human bipedalism. All this should make us wonder about the usual presentation of human evolution in introductory textbooks. Well, now you understand why I've been digging through this chest. I mean, really, the way it looks is that Lucy's just an extinct ape. I'm kind of feeling angry. Like I've been duped. Uh, same thing with Neanderthals. Check out these illustrations that came out after they started finding Neanderthal fossils. Check this one out. This was published in the Illustrated London News about 100 years ago. Whoa. Okay, that's pretty brutish. Now, do you want to know what they think he looks like? now? Sure. Uh, <laughs> wow! Just recently, scientists have discovered that Neanderthals buried their dead, they worked with tools, they wore makeup, they controlled fire, and they even found in a cave in Israel that Neanderthals and humans were living together and building families together. And in other places as well. Okay, well, okay, you know what? That settles it. That settles it. If they can live together, and if they have children together, then Neanderthals are just humans, but the difference is, is that their appearance varies, just like different people groups today can vary. So either these fossils are completely human or completely ape with nothing in between. Now, a specimen is basically any piece of bone, including teeth, that they find. All the specimens from all the different ape men that they've actually found, okay. you can fit them in the back of a small pickup truck. Are you serious? Dead serious. 
Now, if our textbooks won't address the new evidence, what does the Bible say? Man was created on the sixth day in God's image out of dirt and God breathed life into him. And 1 Corinthians 15 39 says, all flesh is not the same kind of flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of man, another flesh of animals, another of fish, and another of birds. That sums it up pretty nicely. Yep. So, what'd you think of Grandpa's chest? I thought it was amazing. Me too. And we learned that just like a style can go out of fashion, the popular ape men theories and their fossils do the same thing. And while their theory keeps changing, God's word never does. Kind of makes you think, doesn't it?